Hello and welcome back and today I want to do a hardware review of the DVA3219. Now for those that aren't aware, I've already done an unboxing video for this device on the other channel. Hopefully it's live or it should be live in the next few hours, but today I want to really focus more on this hardware for a number of reasons. Now I'm going to be doing a software overview of everything this device can do. In a, as soon as this video is done, this is going to be going downstairs and we're putting it into the test area so I can run it and put it for its paces with a bunch of Rio Link IP cameras. But today I want to really focus that magnus uh, the magnoscope on the hardware because in the unboxing video I talked a lot about the software a little bit and in the past I've talked about the software but I do know for a number of you out there the hardware in this, inside this particular device is both brilliant and questionable. Let's get questionable out the way. A number of you weren't exactly massively you know won over by that CPU inside. It's the Intel Atom, it's a quad core uh, the C3538. It's featured in a number of devices and I have asked Synology on two different occasions about their use of CPUs directly in the Q&A's. Do check them out. But this CPU inside this device can be found in other NASes such as the 1819 Plus, the 1618 Plus and now the DVA3219. Now on top of that the device arrives with 4 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded officially to 32 gig of memory. So again very familiar specifications there, but given that this 4 bay retails at £1,360 to £1,400 quid without hard drive media and without VAT, that's a hell of a big ask for a 4 bay. So why should you care about this 4 bay? Let me take a few moments to talk you through it. I'm not going to tell you whether what's right and what's wrong. I'm just hopefully going to plead its case just a little bit. Now, once again, I know I've already done the unboxing, but I'll make it very, very nice and quick. We've got the accessories box. Inside the accessories box, you've got two LAN cables, power cable, UK, because it's one PSU. You've got the keys, you've got the screws, you've got the quick start installation guide. And again, if you want that in more detail, check out the unboxing video. On top of that, the device itself arrives uh, with a great little warranty that I believe is three years of manufacturer's warranty. And on top of that, it arrives with four LAN ports on the rear. Actually, it'd be easier if I just show you. On the rear of this device, we have got four gigabit LAN cables. We've got two USB 3 ports. We've got two expansion ports that support the much larger uh, expansion devices that are available right now. We've got a comms port there that allows you to attach it to pre-existing surveillance setups. We've got the power connector and a lovely big rotating fan there on the rear to keep things lovely and cool. But what we are noticing is this big fan here. In fact, if you take a closer look at the front of this chassis, which for a four bay is surprisingly heavy, you may notice that the drives are not dead center. And that's because of that graphics card, a GTX 1050 Ti. That inside there allows deep video analytics. That allows this device to do a hell of a lot more in Synology Surveillance Station software. On the subject of Surveillance Station, this arrives with eight camera licenses. Almost all Synology NASes arrive with just two and each new license is about 30 quid a pop. Whether you think that's value, that's up to you. I'm not gonna try and convince you one way or the other. I'm just gonna highlight that this does arrive with eight camera licenses and gives you a hell of a lot of support for surveillance. On top of that, it also arrives with BTRFS, so that great file system that has got the set file self-healing, background integrity checks, faster snapshots, and that lovely fluid RAID system, Synology Hybrid RAID, as well as traditional RAID support of things like RAID 1, RAID 0, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, etc. A little bit too much software there, let's reel it back in. Now, the device itself it supports up to 32 cameras thanks to that hardware architecture. And remember, that memory, once you expand the memory a little bit more, it can do a hell of a lot more within that environment. And the fact that it doesn't just support surveillance station, but also supports um, a disk station manager currently in 6.2.2 is still very interesting indeed. In fact, there are many, many ways in which you can add cameras to this device and Synology's own surveillance station software is still easily the best surveillance software out there for NAS. That said, it's worth flicking over and you can check out the overview when it goes live on this about surveillance station. It's worth mentioning there are a couple of downsides that I really think are worth highlighting and are a little disappointing. Not enough to make me think this isn't a good device, but it's enough to make me go, well, so close. One is the lack of HDMI port on the rear. 
this device has got a graphics card built into it and no visual output. Now there are Synology NASes out there that feature HDMI out, such as the MVR1219 and its predecessor, the MVR216. Those are two examples of surveillance NASes that have got a visual out and support of a keyboard and a mouse. You can create a standalone surveillance solution which then lives within the NAS that you can access over the network and the internet and also locally. This doesn't have that. Don't get me wrong, it is designed to be great for surveillance and as a traditional NAS, rivaling that of the 18, 19 and 16, 18, although with smaller capacity, but the lack of um, a video out is a little disappointing to me. The other thing that disappoints me about this device is although it has got those four LAN ports, so link aggregation and stuff like that are fully supported and unavailable to you, there's no option for things like 10 gigabit ethernet. There's no option for upgrading those ports. So although you have got a great surveillance solution, which chances are you're probably not gonna use 10 GBE, it's still a hell of a shame that you've got a box that's got that amount of raw power with a GPU card that doesn't give you that kind of uh, a faster output. Now, a number of you will probably argue, I don't need 10 GB, I don't need SSD cache. The PCIe slot is already taken by a graphics card and I get that. But imagine a time, sometime in the future, if that GPU card power can be leveraged in other ways. Imagine, if you will, two scenarios where one, we see more Synology NASes that have GPU card support, so either a card inside or the ability to add a card, much like another brand that, shan't be, uh, that won't be mentioned. But imagine if you could do that. Imagine having that amount of raw power inside a NAS of graphical manipulation power, dare I add, and with file sizes getting bigger and demand getting faster, being limited to four LAN, being limited to link aggregation and not the ability to go further, limiting you to take advantage of things like SSD cache, which means you would have to remove storage bays. So again, it's a, just a bit of a shame because I do think there is an ability to have both a graphics card and another PCIe slot for more stuff. Whether they argue that that CPU might not do it, I disagree, but I'll, you know they're the product managers, they know. Those are my two big bugbears with this device. Now, in the unboxing video, I should mention, once again, lovely bit of uh, ventilation there, and I do go into a lot more detail about the physical stature of this device, such as the bay, the LEDs and stuff, so do check out that video. But what I will also highlight is in that video, there's something in this one that I couldn't give you in that one, because this device, I managed to remove not only the lid, but I removed that graphics card. This graphics card right here. This is the GTX, um, yeah, GTX 1050 Ti card found inside this device. It's a trimmed down version of that card. And if we look inside, we can see that this card has HDMI out. We can see that this card has DVI out. We can see that we have got DisplayPort, HDMI and DVI. So this card has that functionality. So I tell you what, when I do the tests with this device, it's gonna be very interesting to see what we get from that port or whether they've clipped its wings and stopped you being able to use it. But I'm gonna wrap things up here Bottom line, this device for me is a solid seven, maybe eight out of 10. The CPU inside is still a little bit disappointing, even though it's more than Synology have put out there in their surveillance range in the past, and the graphics card is damn interesting indeed. But there's no denying that at that price point of 13 to 1400 pounds without the VAT, without hard drive media, that's a big, big ask. I know that money goes towards the graphics cards, towards the R&D and towards those licenses, but I know for a number of you, that might be a little bit too much to swallow. That said, it's good that it's both a disk station and a surveillance solution, and I can't wait to find out more about this once we've got it set up in the test area. Do check out the software overview that should be live very, very soon, or that might come out after all the Synology launch content. I'll have to double check. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like and subscribe and click the bell to be more notified about videos coming soon. Cheerio.